Hey there everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. Tonight the skies are looking, well honestly they're not looking that good right now but fortunately according to the weather forecast it looks set to clear up and stay clear right the way through till dawn. Those are my absolute favourite sessions. So tonight as we've had a real spate of extremely bad weather recently, it's been stormy, it's been windy. I am hoping to get a smash and grab session under my belt. I want a one-off M33 shot, the Triangulum Galaxy, as really I've not gave that target the attention it deserves just recently. So for this session, I'm going to be using the Celestron Rasa 8, extremely fast, perfect for getting an image done in one night, coupled up with the Player One Uranus C camera. That's been a favorite companion of mine for, well, months now, really. And I think I'm going to experiment using a light pollution filter for my broadband data gathering. As usually, I like to shoot broadband targets like galaxies completely unfiltered. However, I do have in my possession an IDAS LPS D2 filter, which I'm going to try out for this. All right, guys, so as you can see, I'm inside the observatory now and I'm just waiting for it to get dark, basically. I'll roll off the roof in probably about 10 or 15 minutes or so once I've got my camera in place on the rasa and the filter installed too i also need to determine the correct camera angle as i don't want to get maybe my first or second shot into this sequence that i'm going to plan for tonight using nina and discover you know oh damn i should have rotated the camera i'm clipping off the edges of the galaxy or something to that end as the old saying goes i guess a failure to plan is planning to fail and i think it really is true especially on sessions like tonight where you've only really got one shot to get it right and you don't want to waste a single minute if possible so to that end i'm going to use telescopius to actually plan my framing of this object ever so slightly um it's got all my details effectively of my uh, telescopes and cameras already plugged into it so i can simulate the field of view and the rotation really accurately and get a feel for how i need to set things up ahead of time so I'm just going to use the search function, go for M33, that's the triangulum, let that load in a second, and as you can see, if I just full screen this for you, get a better view, it's got the Rasa input there, you know, the 400mm of focal length, and I've also got the Uranus C plugged into it, 11.2 by 6.3mm uh, chip size, and you can see, if I'd left this at, let's say, 0 degrees rotation, I actually would be cutting off the... Uh, at least from this orientation the top and the bottom of the galaxy so what i want to do now i know that is ahead of time i'm going to plan for that and i'm going to use it at 90 degrees excuse me of rotation as you can see that's going to capture the whole of m33 and its faint extensions which uh, i may be wishful thinking that i'm going to capture those from ball seven but we'll see uh, it's also going to leave me a little bit of room too, so I can agri quite aggressively dither and still be able to crop out all those stacking artifacts when it's done and be left with hopefully a pretty pleasant image. So uh, yeah, a little bit of planning and I think it's going to save you some time in the long run. So I'm going to go ahead now over to the scope, install this filter and make sure I'm at around about 90 degrees of rotation on the camera. As you can probably see, I've got a good few exposures under my belt by this point in the night. It's still quite early doors, so uh, there's a lot of time to go yet, but we're off to a reasonable start, but not perfect by any means, admittedly. Um, we're having issues with passing clouds, unfortunately. So um, if we just try and evidence this for you, so let's take a look at the first exposure of the night right there versus the second, where as you can see, we clearly had some passing cloud. There's this kind of washed out effect and the brown gradient off to one side which i'm probably assuming is the sodium street lamps being reflected from the underside of uh, any passing cloud thus ruining the exposures but by the i think the third yeah the third and onwards it's looking considerably better with just the occasional ruined bit of data from those uh, passing clouds but 
it is what it is. I want to take what I can get at this point. I'm just happy to be out there and uh, shooting effectively. That's the important part. I'm having some fun. One thing that really is standing out to me, though, is how well this kind of whole thing has come together. So that combination of the Rasa and the Uranus C and that IDAS filter is making this galaxy in particular look better than I've ever seen it before, personally speaking. So um, if you just go to a 100% view right there on the screen for you guys so you can see the amount of hydrogen alpha that's just leaping off the screen at least it is for me on this preview right here i hope it's coming across properly for anybody watching this on youtube but like these nebulous segments in the um the spiral arms of this galaxy are just full of ha more than i've ever been able to pull out of it before so uh i'm really optimistic actually even though the night's not perfect yet i'm hopeful that it could well change um but even so the experiment has already been worth it. It's been worth it to get everything up and running because I had no idea really how this combination was going to go on galaxies and the answer seems to be it's working really rather well. So uh, with that said, anyway, I'm going to remain quietly optimistic and uh, hope that things clear up properly and that I get a good session under my belt and a nice final image to share with all you guys. So. Uh, that's about it for now. I'll catch up with you in a couple of hours time and let you know how it's going. Alright then guys, so we've just hit 2.45 in the morning and I figured it was time for a bit of a final update. So, as you can probably see, conditions really, really, really improved throughout the night. I mean, this is the latest exposure on the screen there. If I take you back and show you one of the earlier ones from the night, so this is frame number 4, you can see the difference is huge between then and now. So, um, yeah, now I've started gathering data of this quality, I'm, uh, <laughs> I was excited before. But I'm absolutely buzzing about it now. I just can't wait to keep uh, gathering all this data and then stack it up. I'm really genuinely interested to see how this is going to turn out because this is my first broadband galaxy project with the RASA actually. Uh, as it happens, I have shot plenty of nebulae, uh, lots of dual narrowband work with it, but this is the first time I've attempted a galaxy. And um, it's been a bit eye opening. To be quite honest with you, F2 is not to be trifled with. It's just incredible the amount of signal coming through. That looks better, I reckon, genuinely now, than my last stacked image of M33 that I'd done. So <laughs> it must be doing something right. Um, anyway, guys, that's roughly about it. I think the rest of the night's going to look very much the same as this, unless the conditions worsen. Uh, so I'm probably going to leave things around about there. So I hope. As always, that you've enjoyed this video, and as always also, I'd like to say thank you very much indeed for all of your support. That goes out to absolutely everybody out there, right from just watching the videos to direct support on Patreon, YouTube memberships, things like that. I do appreciate all of you. So, um, I'm probably going to leave things there. Sorry about the kind of abrupt end to things, and uh, I look forward to speaking to you all next time. So until then, as always, once again, look after yourselves. And close guys.